You guys, I finally have my own yard and garden. So today I'm inviting you to my picnic table to paint some pansies with me. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel we make art and it's fun, not scary. It's a beautiful sunny day in June, so I thought it would be nice to do a little plain air watercolor painting. Um, I do a bit of a potted garden on the deck. I say that like I'm a real gardener. I've always hated gardening, but being a first time homeowner has changed me. I have a bit of a potted garden on the deck with lots of geraniums and pansies and herbs. And I've even kind of got into, you know, like putting down a bit of mulch and pulling some weeds uh, around the rest of the property. That sounds nothing like me. <laughs> it's just funny to hear those words coming out of my mouth. I have this pretty little antique planter full of pansies. If you know me, you know I love a good thrifted secondhand find. Follow me on Instagram for lots of home stuff at Shada Campbell. So it's full of beautiful pansies and that's what we're going to paint today. Not super realistically, I just want to use these as my inspiration and do a really loose, simple watercolor floral. You're going to see me mix up some colors, get some pansies on the page. It's probably going to take about 15 minutes, so feel free to paint along with me and get that creative me time. So I'm going to start by wetting my brush and the thing about the pansies is that we're going to work with wet into wet and wet on dry today. This particular flower is a great lesson in both. And for wet into wet, you really want to have all your colors mixed up ahead of time so that everything is right there at your fingertips, ready to go. I'm mixing a few different purples. I've got a mix of violet with a little bit of magenta mixed in there. So I have this rich, dark, warm purple. And then over here I have violet mixed with a little bit of ultramarine blue and a little bit of white. So it's very light, very cool, lots of water in there as well. And then in addition to my purples, I have a beautiful spring green. It's sap green mixed with deep thalo green. That's going to be there and ready for me to paint all the leaves and branches. I have some yellow. I'm using yellow orange mixed with just a little bit of raw sienna or yellow ochre. Either one would be good. And then finally, I have even a little bit of violet mixed with black so that I have like this super dark purple. And we're going to start by painting these pansies really loose, really free and fun and thinking about wet into wet. I'm working in my favorite watercolor sketchbook today. And remember, all of the supplies are linked in the video description. Also, if all of this wet into wet, wet on dry color mixing is like, whoa, whoa, slow down. I do have a beginner level e-course and that is available on my website. It's a really good price if I do say so myself and uh, shadycampbell.com, you'll find it there. So let's begin with some pansies. Here's how I paint them. Run that brush across the page, one smooth motion. There's one petal. That's Mickey Mouse, then do his ears up here. That's all you have to do to start and then think of painting a bunch of those in a cluster, but they're not all going to be the exact same size or shape. They're not all gonna be on the same angle. Some of them might be blowing in the wind. Some of them might be torn or facing away from the viewer. And then remember, everything dries quickly when you're working outside. E even when you're working inside, things can dry quicker than you might expect. So I want to while this is lightly wet, not puddle wet, but lightly wet, I want to release a little of that darker color. Just think of doing a little V shape, a couple little lines. We don't have to do all of them either. Sometimes you get too much movement of your pigment. Another thing I want to do is make sure that I blend some of my green with that purple so that I get, you know, that little burst and blend of color. I don't need to do it for all of them, but I want to make sure that I achieve that nice loose watercolor look. Let's add some more pansies in here. I also want to have the pansies sort of touching each other so that they get that beautiful blend of purple and bluey and everything just looks really loose and summery. 
I want to take a second to thank Native for sponsoring today's video. When it comes to my deodorant, there's two things I want, clean ingredients and a fresh scent that doesn't like overpower. Native deodorants are vegan and cruelty free and they're also aluminum and paraben free. And they use clean, simple, effective ingredients that you actually know of like shea butter and coconut oil. The texture is also really nice. It's not sticky and it feels dry when you're applying it. When it comes to shopping native deodorants, choosing your scent is the best part because all the scents are good. I got jasmine and cedar. It smells so green, just like this wonderful clean forest. <laughs> and then I also got sea salt and cedar, which smells like like the ocean. And I of course got um, unscented because I love an unscented product across the board. I think best of all, Native also offers a plastic-free version of their deodorant using the same formula, but with more sustainable packaging. It's earth-friendly, 100% plastic-free, and that matters to me because I try my best not to have a lot of plastics in our home. Native also has amazing body washes and lotions, so use my link and code SHADA3 to get 20% off your entire first purchase at Native. This offer is available site-wide, but only for a limited time so stock up and save. While everything is still lightly wet, I'm going to release a little yellow right at the center. A large part of watercolor painting is timing. If you do this too soon, that yellow is just going to take over and make a huge mess. Do it too late and the yellow, it's not gonna look bad, it will just sit right on top and you won't get that same sort of uh, movement. That's not necessarily the worst case scenario, certainly not. Here, this one's probably quite dry. So the yellow is just kind of on top and that's okay, I'm not mad at that. But I do like that kind of softening that I get over here. And you can always use a damp brush to move it and blend as well. Kind of see what you come up with. I'll place one last pansy in here and then I'm going to take that super dark purple. You can mix purple with indigo or black and we're going to add some coloring to these flowers. As I said in the beginning, this is a super loose painting, not overly realistic, but adding this color, it just brings these flowers to life and they are immediately recognizable. You can do this a little bit with wet into wet and then adding it at this point uh, with a wet on dry technique, which is just where we're adding that wet paint over top of the dry pigment, the flowers, it gives you all of the precision in the world. So your brush strokes are not going to move or bleed and you can make these tiny thin little lines or you can just put down like a dark purple splotch or even a black splotch and uh, just see what happens. I'm not approaching all of them the exact same way. Some I just do a few lines, some others a little splotch, but I am adding the darker pigment to all of them. And what I'm gonna do right here is just kind of mix a little more blue and a little more violet into that periwinkle color. So there's a little less water in there. That means the pigment is going to be darker, less opaque. And I'll take that dark bluish color and we'll add some more little lines and splotches on the um, light sort of periwinkle colored pansies that I've got here.
And then with that done, I want to complete this composition. And I'm going to do that by framing the flowers with lots of leaves and little curly Q branches and stems. I've got kind of a circular formation of pansies right in the center of the page. Now I want to really make them pop with lots and lots of greenery surrounding them. I really love painting the pansy stems and leaves. They just make great brushwork practice and they're a lot of fun. So you're gonna take a good amount of green in that round brush. I'm using a number six. And you can just use the very tip of that brush to paint this almost grass-like branch and then run that belly of the brush across the page in a few smooth motions and get that really natural little shaggy leaf. They're not only fun to paint and good brushwork practice, but it's really easy to make a beautiful composition because you just keep adding more sort of curly cues and leaves and you are able to frame your flowers in a really lovely way. In between some of these flowers, it's sometimes nice just to do like a little bit of a messy green splotch like that. It's sort of like a leaf is there, but you don't have to paint the whole thing. And all the stems and leaves and flowers, it all doesn't have to connect either. I leave a lot of negative space in my watercolor paintings, my loose watercolor florals in particular, and, and I just love the way that negative space looks. An example of that would be right through here. You know, none of these stems are connected, and I'm okay with that. See, I need a little bit more color on this guy here. Forgot about you. Let's do a little wet on dry and just get those tiny little lines. You can also do some thin little lines sort of on the edges of some of the petals just to show some shading. Remember, we're just doing a nice, easy breezy outdoor painting, so don't get too carried away with with fine details, but I, I do think that looks kind of pretty. I'm going to mix a little indigo into this dark purpley blend and do a couple more little lines there. I am just having so much fun with this painting and I would love to do more outdoor content. So let me know what other flowers would you like to see at the picnic table? <laughs> Comment below and let me know. I added one last little flower to the composition there. After all the stems and leaves are in, you might add a few more small uh, purple pansies. And then I rinsed my brush, picked up a bit of dark yellow, and just added a little of that yellow to the center of some of the flowers, some that were a little washed out. 
And then I had a thought, and this is why I love loose watercolor flowers. I just like to add some yellow brush strokes. And I did, and I think it really works with the whimsy of this composition. It doesn't always have to make sense with this style of painting, and I love that. My painting is almost complete. I think I've been painting for about 15 minutes. And I'm just mixing a little bit more deep phthalo green into my green blend. And I'm going to take that darker color, add a few splotches on some of the leaves. You don't have to do all of them. It just helps to give them a little bit more definition. And if you need any more little curly cues going off any which way, now is the time to add them. Otherwise, I think I'm all done. I'm really pleased with this little quick painting. Honestly, it was just relaxing to sit outside. It's a bit breezy today, which means there's like maple keys and stuff pooping on me, but that's okay. And that's it. Thanks for hanging out with me in my backyard, my very first yard. If you want more beginner level uh, watercolor tutorial content, there is a comprehensive e-course on my website, shadacampbell.com. There's also a Beyond Beginner course over there if you're kind of struggling to find content that's a little bit more in depth than beginner. And if you would like a watercolor worksheet to guide you through this quick painting, that is available over on my Patreon. All of the bonus content is just two bucks a month or $22 for the year. And it's a great way to support the channel. Thanks for being here. Please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.